is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is the Players Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. All right, everybody, it is time for the Players' Lounge. I am Nui Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter, joined by former Dallas Cowboys safety, number 42, Barry Church. I'm here at Oxnard, California, Cowboys training camp, where Mike McCarthy just wrapped up his press conference. Church is back in Texas. All right, B. Church, how are we feeling today? Man, look, it's still hot as hell down here in Dallas, man. But look, man, we're, we're all living through you right now. You're, all, you're in California. You got that ocean breeze coming in. You might have had to put a light jacket on today. But you got to witness the padded practices that the Cowboys have been having. So, look, man, we're, we're living through you right now. You're on top of the hill, Nui. What you, what you got for us, big dog? Yes, I did have to put on a light jacket, and yesterday when we interviewed uh, <laughs> Dak Prescott, it got cold, and I didn't have a jacket, man, so I was I was hurting, so uh, not today, baby. I made sure I brought my light jacket today. <laughs> well, here's the thing about the pad of practice, and, and I'll start with um, the most important thing, which is number four. We're sitting out here wondering where's Dak as they start going into the team drills, and Dak ended up leaving the football field and went with the trainers and says he's got some shoulder soreness here, so he's going to take a couple days off. And, and just look at my notes here. Mike McCarthy said that it's not of high concern at all. He said that Dak didn't want to leave the practice field, but but they McCarthy wanted him to go ahead and leave the field. And he said Dak will still do all the drill work today. And uh, he said it's a good opportunity for them to catch a fatigue injury so they're not worried about Dak Prescott long term and when we spoke to Dak he just said hey look I noticed a little um he noticed something two days ago and then yesterday at the pad of practice he noticed the strain again and he just decided he was going to be cautious so for all Cowboy Nation out there and for people you know basically NFL fans across the you know the nation who want to know hey what's going on with the Cowboys in number four they say he'll be fine and in a couple of days expecting to be out there now, based on that, let me tell you, Church, I don't know if I can break it to you, just, uh, but just tell you the truth, okay? Uh, double, uh. G, double G did not look good. In fact, none of the Cowboy backups looked good at all yesterday. Five picks in the padded practice, okay? Five. Five? Five, five. interceptions. Five. By himself or as a group, they threw five. It was, it was as a group. It was a group. No, don't worry. Danucci made sure he got, he got something in there, too. But... <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting around with Nate Newton, former three-time Super Bowl champion, two days ago, and when we were looking at, at at the backups, I said, "Hey, man, Dak's backup is not on this roster. He's not on this roster." And yesterday, I think just proved it one more time. Now, unless these guys do something amazing in preseason, I think they're going to sit up here and possibly be looking. Now, the good thing about the backups having an opportunity with Dak being out the next few days is they're going to get they're going to get their shot. We'll see exactly what they can do. But yesterday, man, it was not good at all. And I'll also be fair, Mari Cooper's not been at practice. He hasn't practiced since camp started. And then Michael Gallup sat out because of his ankle, and Gallup will be out again today. So you didn't have you know, two really good receivers out there, but still five picks is just unacceptable. Ah, five, five picks, that is. That's a lot of intercessions, especially as a group. And, and look, I, I know, you know, Garrett Gilbert, he's, he's more of a gamer. So I expect him to, you know, he's going to arrive when that Hall of Fame games and the spotlight's on him. He's more <laughs> of a gamer. So I, I'm not worried about the practice. He's going to go out there and shine. But I, I wanted to ask you this, Nui, is do you see that as just a lack of talent or skill in the backup quarterback position or do you see it as our defense communicating well flying around to the ball and actually taking the ball away do you see that as a good sign for our defense or is it just man these backups are that much below uh, Dak Prescott's ability I think if you have been one of those who's been sold on Dan Quinn coming in here and being Mr. Mr. Fix it I would say so far you should feel really good these guys are communicating, they're talking. Mike McCarthy had spoken about the press conference that he just wrapped up out here. I also believe that there's a pride factor here that maybe we haven't given enough credit to for the Cowboys. And the guys who were here on this team last year understood that that, that just wasn't acceptable, that wasn't good. And even more importantly, something we've all talked about here on the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com, is there's competition, man. You know, there's no sacred cows. I and mean, guys are out here fighting for jobs. And that hasn't always been the case here with the Cowboys the past few seasons. And I like that. It, guys are going to have to get up here and, and earn a spot. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, we talked about it all last season, how it felt like this defense just didn't have any accountability. It was, ah, uh, you know, I missed that play, or somebody else will go get that play. And we've we seen it even in our, our safety last year, Xavier Woods, when he said, hey, you can't expect us to go uh, 100 miles an hour or 100% all the time and that, that's, that was just basically a microcosm of what this defense was they were just you know they weren't accountable and they were letting things slide and, and we saw that in our play on the field so I love what Dan Quinn has done so far this offseason bringing in competition on all three levels I mean we've seen the, the additions on the D tackle and the linebackers we got Parsons Cox all those guys in there and now we make it even more It just breeds competition, and I've always been a believer that competition brings the best out of all these players. So hopefully as things are finally starting to click for this defense because they got the potential, they got the skill to be able to go out there and be, a, uh, you know, mediocre, even, you know, like McCray would say, a top 10 defense. But we just got to see it out there. And I think last year they were too confused out there, and hopefully they, they, they simplify the defense a little bit. And these guys are just flying from A to B and not just worrying about thinking too much out there. There's a buy-in factor. And the buy-in factor was not there, okay? Let, let's just be honest. The buy-in factor wasn't there. Barry, you played in this league. And guys have to believe in what the defense is, believe in the coordinator, you know, just, just have an overall belief. Of like, hey, this coach is putting me in the best position and is going to help me win some games. I don't think that was the case with Mike Nolan at all last year. Well, I, I will say this. Do you believe that having that – full off season, having that OTAs mini camp and now training camp and we're going to have preseason game. Do you think that also played a role in how these guys seem to be flying around right now? I do. I believe that. But I also I also believe that what do they say? The strength of the pack is, is with the leader and the leader is Dan Quinn who's coming out here with, with energy and coming out here with a sense of focus and I, so far I see that translating. I think that the way Mike Nolan kind of went about things is kind of how they looked. And, yes, yeah, so getting your hands on these guys, it helps. Uh, Mike McCarthy's admitted that last year they didn't really have a, a, a good program in place to deal with the pandemic as, as much as they could have. So uh, I, am, I am cautiously optimistic of what I've seen so far. And I say cautiously because I've been fooled before. And, uh, <laughs> President Bush once said, I can't get fooled again. So Can't get fooled again. Can't we get were both on that train. <laughs> but I, I, I'm still about looking at the defensive tackles, see what they're doing here, and, and that's the benefit of having a guy like Nate Newton to practice. I always try to go watch practice with, with people who are experienced, people who have an understanding of what's going on. And so Nate had talked about just looking at a couple of the offensive linemen here and, and a couple of the defensive linemen. Uh, number 75, Osa Adigi Wooza from UCLA. That's a guy that, that I'm going to keep looking out for. I keep looking out at uh, Big Bohannon, number 98, that they took up from Memphis. And, and um, Nevin Gallimore, number 96. I think Gallimore is a guy that we We've all talked about it looks as though he's going to be able to have that second year improvement and some of these guys in their second year they're going to have the ability to help this defense out i look at trey did in his second year and with a full you know you think about it too now these guys are in their real first you know full training camp where they're you know it's not the whole COVID protocol here and i think we're seeing a couple guys um step up candidate maurice candidate has looked good at the corner spot okay Done. Okay. Hey, this is this is this is a player here. So we'll see. Said I'm cautiously optimistic, man, because I think sometimes as Cowboys media members, we want to find the positives and write about the positives and talk about the positives without always saying, hey, look, uh, you know, who are they going against? What's going on here? Because as much as we're talking about these five picks and, and, and who's picking them off here, I mean, Garrett Gilbert, Ben DiNucci, and and Cooper Rush, you know, th th these guys are not expected to be playing on Sundays. And if they are playing for the Cowboys or any other NFL team on Sundays, it's probably not going to be a good thing. This is true. This is true. All right, I, I, I want to get back to the to the hog mollies. I want to get back down to the, the Giants in the trenches. I mean, we you got to witness, you know, the full, first full, full padded practices out there. Did the big three and, you know, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and Lyle, were they involved in any of these, you know, defensive line, offensive line, one-on-ones or battles in the trenches like that? How did they look and how did this defensive line look, you know, having them first full padded practice? Because like we said, everybody looks good in shorts, but did they look as good as they did in shorts with these pads on? So when they started going into the, the individual drills, I, I stood next to Nate Newton, and that was, and that was you know, great, what a great education. I mean, I wish everyone – could have had that opportunity that I had to sit next to a Pro Bowl three-time NFL champion and, and see what he's watching for. Collins looked good. Okay, I'm just going to say that by the end. Collins 
ended up looking very nice. And the, the uh, hips also, look fluid and everything, huh? And that was what we looked about afterwards. Okay, hey, he just had the play, just made a hit. So how's he looking afterwards? So Collins is looking good, man. Uh, and I, I okay. just, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. Connor Williams, according to Nate, not, not what he wants him to be. He still feels like he's too light. He also thinks that the center Tyler Biotis is light. So he, mm. he's got some concern about that that center guard combination of what he's seeing right there. The far not kid, he looked like he, he's 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 gonna have some ability here. So let's see what he can do. Um, Randy Gregory was was hard to block. Randy Gregory, um, a player that I'm going to see more out of, especially from a blocking standpoint, is Jeremy Sprinkle, the tight end. Had a couple nice okay. blocks in these drills that they, they had them line up with the offensive line, number 87 kid from Arkansas and I I saw Sprinkle play in college he ended up coming to Fort Worth for a, a game uh, with with TCU that they ended up winning in overtime and I thought he was a nice player he was up in Washington chatted with JP Finley who covers the Washington football team for NBC Sports up there and and he felt that hey he's he's not a real player that the guy can't really you know he couldn't help you in that Washington offense and that Washington mm. offense they really wanted their they wanted their tight ends to be more pass catchers I just believe yeah. that the Cowboys need to have a tight end who can block in this offense. Blake Jarvin's coming off the ACL, so you, you still have to kind of be wary of that. You know, Dalton Schultz is not a blocker. Sean McCune from Michigan, he's more of a blocker. But Sprinkle, you know, I think you need I think you need four tight ends. I, I really do because you think we're going to ca carry four into the into the season? That, that's that's heavy at that position. It, it is, but you know, Sprinkle's also going to have to play some special teams. And Church, I keep coming back into this. You're talking about 17 game season, now. okay? 17 That's game true. season. So, so you're going to, you know, Jarwin and Schultz are going to make the team, okay? So we know this. McCune made it last year, so you, know, you could cut Sprinkle and then maybe get him back. But I can see them keeping four tight ends because you've got to account for the fact that Jarwin is coming off this injury. So if if something happens to Jarwin, now you've got you know, you got Schultz, you got McCune. So I think Sprinkle and, can, can make the roster. Oh, by the way, remember, he's an Arkansas Razorback. You know, Jerry's got Jerry nah. Stephen have they, they, they have a place <laughs> in their hearts for those Razorbacks. He got that connection, man. And, and look, those, the third and fourth tight end, if we were to keep that, that many at that position, they've got to be heavy contributors on special teams, especially if they want to wear pads, if they want to get, in, get into that 46 man with the pads on on Sundays, they got to contribute on special teams. So if I'm Sprinkle, um, if I'm the kid from Michigan, you know, I got to become best friends with, with, with Fossil. I got to become best friends with Bones out there if I'm going to, you know, try to make this team because, we're, I mean, we're stacked everywhere else. I mean, it's, it's stacked everywhere. So it's, it's going to be tough making that. That position at that tight end, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if they're able but, but, to get um, get down with special teams. Stay with what you're saying right there. Coming off of ACL, you, you, you know, you want Jarwin nowhere near your special teams right there. So that's true. You know, you're, you're taking him off right there. But that's what we're talking about with Sprinkle being able to block. So if Sprinkle's able to block here, so now you put that on your punt team protection. You put that on, you know, you, you put that on uh, point after. You know, so so there's ways where you you can watch this guy get some stuff in terms of uh, special teams. That that's good. You know, I'm gonna have to end up uh, asking. Fossil the next time they let us talk to the coordinators about what he's seeing from McEwen and, and Sprinkle in terms of, of being special teams contributors and, and, and what they're going to do. But, I, you know, he, hey, Church, you, you play this league. Got, guys know when they're coming here, they bottom them into the roster, that they've got to be special teams contributors because they're just not going to be able to get themselves out on the football field at all. It's just not, not going to happen. Hey, let's squeeze in our first break. When we come back, an observation I had yesterday that – I don't want to dive too heavily in, but it was just an observation that I ended up liking his hand. Hmm, this could be good for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Louis Scruggs, on time Cowboys reporter, joined by Barry Church, former Dallas Cowboys safety. This is Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com, right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. 
Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to the Players' Lounge. Hey, get the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Cowboys fan. Join Dallas Cowboys United, presented by Globe Life, starting at just $20. Join now and get your fan pack, exclusive access to training camp benefits and more. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash United for details to join today. You're checking out the Players' Lounge. It's brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Louis Scruggs. Joined by Barry Church, Church number 42, former Dallas Cowboys safety. Our other running buddy, Danny McCray, is doing some camp work back home in the Dallas Fort Worth. Star. So... Good Ooh. luck to Danny as he gets I hope he's indoors. Done. Exactly. I hope exactly. he is indoors. So, uh, <laughs> good, good luck there, brother. Good luck there. So I wanted to touch on something that, that as a conversation that we got to meet with the media. So we get to talk to four players every day. And Terrell Basham was a guy that came over. And one of the things I asked him, I said, what, what should fans expect? What are, we, what are, you gonna, what are people going to see out of you this year? He said, man, energy. I am here to bring energy. He's like, that is what we need, man. We need energy. And he said, I'm tired of losing. He said, I know the Cowboys had a losing season last year. He said, I don't see that two years in a row. He said, man, I've never won. Uh, I want to win. And that's why he came here. And, okay. <laughs> you know, he talked about having jukes, uh, that on the field. Dan Quinn's talked about that. And, and, and it just made me think, you know what? How many times did you see the Cowboys having have energy last year? And he's like, you know, it, this could be – he could be bringing something that they need, which is you know just kind of an attitude. Just say, hey man, let's have some energy. Let's come out here, be focused, and let's roll. And a guy who is tired of winning. I mean, I- I'm always a fan of that. You know, it gets to a point in time in your career where you're like, you know, dude, I'm tired of taking these L's. I want some dubs. Yeah, and and look, man, every team needs at least one or two of those guys that just bring that passion, that bring that juice, that that energy to any certain situation. I mean, you got to have it. One, you got to have it to get through camp. I mean, those days are long. Those weeks get long. And when you start getting padded practice on top of padded practice, it it wears you down. But you got to have that one or two guys that are just no matter what's going on. It could be the fifth straight day in pads. You could be down 20 in a game. It don't matter. They still bring that passion, that juice, and they get you excited. I mean, for us. Us, it was a it was a guy by the name of JJ Wilcox who aka we called him juice man because he brought that juice no matter what time it was he brought the juice and Tyron Crawford in his younger years he always was passionate about going hard in the paint no matter what was going on whatever no matter what the coaches asked him to do so you definitely need one of those guys on the field to keep you energetic keep you getting get you through practice get you through a game and uh, hopefully he can bring that passion because you're right Nui I mean last year all we really saw was, you know, guys with their heads down, you know, just communicating errors, guys looking at each other, pointing a finger, and you, you don't have that when you got a passion, a, a, when you got a passion about something. And, and some of those guys out there last year, they just didn't have it. So hopefully, Basham and a couple other new guys that we bring in here bring that that rejuvenated juice back to this uh, this team, and especially on the defensive side of the ball. Mike McCarthy spoke about he'd rather have guys, you know, with too much juice and, and, and being at a high level than the opposite way. And Basham talked about how he's enjoyed working with Dan Quinn. So you see Quinn doing a lot of work with the D-line, especially in these individual drills. He's in there working these guys. And Basham said he really appreciated that. He likes that in a coach. And he thinks that that kind of helps that coach, you know, get more out of them. And so then I said, you mean like Greg Williams last year? And he just looked at me. He just kind of looked at me side-eyed like, um, yeah. And then there was another question that he spoke about. And I said, did Greg Williams do that with you last year? 
And then he just kind of looked at me again like, man, I got <laughs> nothing good to say about Greg Williams who got fired by the Jets. And we all know what kind of year they had in New York. So he's and, looking and, and to least, come here and win. And yeah, and at least he, he didn't just throw them all the way. He just kind of gave you the side eye like, yeah, all right. At least he didn't, you know, go full force on them because they, they struggled. They struggled big time last year. And, and like you said, man, like we, we both were saying, we need some passion. We need some juice, especially on this defensive side of the ball. I mean, it's last year was just, I mean, we, we were all witness to it. It just wasn't what we wanted to put on the field. The product just wasn't there. So, you know, we need this juice. and Hopefully he can bring it and, and, and inject us with it going out through the season. Church, you understand this because you got to play for the Cowboys, you play for the Jaguars. They speak about Dan Quinn in a way we never heard them speak about Mike Nolan last year. And look, I know it's early, but to me, I think that matters. When you've got a buy-in factor, I'm sorry, these are professional athletes, man. These aren't college kids where you can just browbeat them and force them to do what you want to. Pros have got to buy into this thing. And so far, they've bought in. I hadn't seen a they preseason have. game or anything, but doggone it, it just beats last year. And and the bar was so low last year that doggone it, fine. You know, buy into this guy, have some juice, come out here with some energy. you got to see the way these guys are reacting when somebody gets a pick six or somebody makes a stop as they're, they're going through these drills. This defense, man, these guys are all out here rooting for each other. Doggone it, man. We didn't see it last year, man. I didn't see that at these training camp practices last year, okay? I didn't see that we, kind of attitude, man. We, did, we didn't see it at all. I mean, you see it when, when – when, um What's his name? KZ got the pick a couple days ago. I mean, the whole sidelines erupted. Defense erupted. I mean, you see these guys buying into it. You know, they're, they're, they're being accountable for each other. Somebody makes a mistake, they're not just, you know, sweeping it under the rug or, or saying, oh, these coaches can't coach. I mean, they're keeping each other accountable. And, and that goes huge. That goes huge, especially on the defensive side of the ball when you believe in what your coach is preaching. Like when we play with Marinelli, we believe that no matter what, scratch, claw, you got to punch that ball out. You got to find some way to get the ball out. When you believe that, it's, it's going to become second nature. And hopefully that becomes second nature that these guys are going to hustle to the ball, take the ball away, hit and run with a passion that we didn't see last year. And if we're able to do that, I mean, I, I don't know about top 10, but we, we could definitely creep into the middle of the pack as a defense overall. And we need that, especially with this explosive offense that we have. If the offense does its job and puts 30 points on the board and they've got a middle-of-the-road defense, then they should be... In a, in a good place. I believe that, you know, based on, if you do that, if you're scoring 30, 32 points a game and your defense is, is middle of the road, if, it, if it's, you know, 15, 16, 14 in that area, then I think they can have a winning season. So we'll see, because I'm still, I still got to see the D-line, baby. The D-line has to be better, okay? It has to be better. Um, yes. Let me bring up another thing that I saw at, at training camp practice, and this was in the, uh, after practice, getting the chance to talk to Malik Cooker. The safety they brought in who missed last season with an Achilles. He said, look at my production when healthy. So if you're a Cowboy fan, this is about health. If, if Malik Hooker is healthy, then Malik Hooker can help. If he's not, then, you know, then they're, they're taking a one-year flyer. So I think of it in terms of, all right, here's KZ, here's Hooker. You've taken some flyers on some guys. Obviously, on one-year deals, they've got something to prove. And we'll just see through competition what happens. I don't think that you have to cut one or the other. You know, we've got J. Ron Curse out here. I've got to pay a little bit more attention to him. So we'll see. I just love the fact that there's competition here, man. And so oh, because yeah. it's competition and guys are out here having to play for, having to eat, you know, and sing for their supper, then I think that's a good deal, man. I, I think it's great that, you know, there's competition amongst every level on the defensive side of the ball. But, Nui, let me ask you, you think that if they, if, let's just say, for some reason, let's just say Hooker beats out KZ and he's a starting free safety, you wouldn't want, if you're Hooker, you wouldn't want, you know, them to say, okay, all right, you won this job, KZ, you know, we got we to gotta let you go. We'll see, you know, we'll give you an opportunity to land somewhere else, but we got to let you go. That way, Hooker's not always looking over his shoulder. Man, if, if this doesn't go right, if this doesn't go wrong, my, my leash is short. They're going to they're gonna pull, the trigger, pull the trigger quick on me. Uh, you know, it's great to have depth. But you would want your guy, your guy, whoever wins that starting battle, to be able to play freely knowing that if he doesn't mess up at all, somebody's going to come snag his job right back from him. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I get the depth piece of it, but do you think we got room to keep both? Church, you came off the Achilles injury, and that's what, that's what both guys are dealing with here. I don't know that you can necessarily say, hey, this particular player is fine because you can re-injure that thing. Or, in the cases of both guys, 
they could they could get injured again. They've got injury history, so I just don't think you can say, all right, Hooker's here, Casey's gone. Casey's here, Hooker's. Gone. I I just think you go with both guys in a 17 game season. I I'm going to emphasize that so much here on the Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. 17 game season. It's uncharted. We haven't seen it before. It's tough enough to get guys through 16 games. So now you're adding a game. And the Cowboys are going to go through that stretch. I want to believe it's maybe nine games in a row that they're going to have to play here. And you start yeah. looking at the end of December where you're you're basically four of your last six games against NFC East teams. You know, so, so the division title most likely is going to be on the line in these last few games. And I just don't think you can sit around here and think about cutting, cutting guys like this if you feel that they have a role and, and can help you play. Um, play some football games. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm a I mean, fan of having multiple guys here, and then along the way, you know, they'll tell you, get, got you. Football players have a way of telling you what you need to do <laughs> through their performance. Yeah, this is true. I mean, this is true, and I mean, and it, it just kind of worries me as a defense overall. I mean, we we got to go heavy some at some level, either whether it be D line, linebackers, secondary. We got to go heavy at, at a certain position somewhere. But it, it just scares me overall that we're fielding such a you know kind of a wounded defense. I mean, like you said, we got Hooker coming off a huge injury, KZ, Keanu Neal. Uh, let me look at our linebackers last year. We're all beat up. So I mean, it's 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 we're definitely fielding an injury team and adding another game, 17 games. And I think after our bye week, I don't know if we play a nine straight or 11 straight. It, it's something that's long, and it's gonna it's definitely gonna gonna wear and tear on our players out there. So we definitely need our depth, but I'm just not sure if they're gonna go heavy at the safety, linebacker, or D line position. Obviously, health is going to dictate what happens here. I mean, so much of this is about health and what happens at camp. I mean, right now we're looking at Gallup dealing with the, the knee, I mean, should say the ankle injury from two days ago. And, and we see Cooper still trying to get where he needs to be. But Tristan Hill is, is still out there working with Britt Brown on the side. He's on the pup list, not ready to go. So I just think that how they set this team will be determined so much by the health and who else was that I'm looking at here today? Um, Tyron. Okay, Tyron is not practicing today, according to head coach Mike McCarthy, because of elbow tendonitis. So that's that's something to, to, to think about as you start looking at your football team. He brought up uh, Terrence Still, by the way, and he said, let um, me look at my notes here from the McCarthy press conference. He said that Still is a great great example of a guy who's in his second year and the weight room work and what he went through there that he likes what he's seen there so a lot of positives about um, some of the guys on the roster at the backup position right now but this is this is health man I mean you've seen it you saw what they all went yeah. through last year and that's this league yeah. who's healthy and, and I think, shoot go ahead I was going to say the only thing I think that good that came out of last year with all these injuries is it gave a chance like the steals the knights those guys of the world to, to get a lot of reps and get game, get actual game time experience out there. I mean, it was definitely a hosh posh of old linemen that we used to throw in there. We were playing fantasy football, maxing and matching and moving people here and there. But it gave those guys vital experience out there that they're going to need. I mean, especially if they're going for a backup role, seeing as though those big three, you know, Tyron, Zach Martin and Lyle Collins have all had injury history or injury history problems or whatever. So. For me, I gave them a lot of good uh, game experience, and you know they, they can they can provide uh, vital backup roles for us going throughout the season. And, and we'll see. And, and this is a good question. I got to start to dive into is, is how are they going to have the practice rosters this year? Because last year you were able to keep some veterans on the practice roster, and they they increased it. So so how 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 do the Cowboys go about that? So let's say, for instance, they only keep three tight ends, and you cut a sprinkle. So are you able to possibly put sprinkle on your practice? In your practice squad. So these these are some interesting things about what what will the Cowboys be able to do? How will the league have their rules this year? Coming out of you're still dealing. We're still in the pandemic. Okay, we're still in the pandemic. So how will the NFL go about that? So I'm I'm going to be really interested. I think that so much will dictate what the Cowboys do with certain players. And I think you're right. Where do you go heavy at? And this is a great 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 question. If we just don't know yet, the players are going to tell us. In camp, yeah. uh, what we see in the preseason games, guys, guys are going to cut themselves or guys are going to help themselves. They do it all the time, especially now with this football team, and I'm pretty excited about that. Hey Barry, let's squeeze in another uh, another break that we got to get to right here. Um, somebody's got a birthday today with the Dallas Cowboys. We'll tell you exactly who it is. Pretty important player. We'll do that next on the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. 
Sweetie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Before you can park yourself in front of the game, park yourself in a John Deere and power through your chores. Our Land Run Package is a 1025R, 25 horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, and a box blade for $229 a month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. So don't miss another kickoff. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. To the Players Lounge. The new Era Sideline Collection has landed in store so fans can wear the same headwear as the team. Just head to the Pro Shop, your official store of the Dallas Cowboys Nation, to get the 2021 New Era Draft Cap. Visit your local Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop or online at shop.dallascowboys.com. You are checking out the Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Louis Scruggs, joined by Barry Church, former Dallas Cowboys safety, number 42. Number 40, Danny McCray, former Cowboys safety, is off today. He's out handling Dallas Cowboys camps. So, Church, mm. um, it is Dak Prescott's birthday today. So, uh, oh, no. yeah, yeah, it's so Paul's wanna, birthday, huh? Yeah, so, so Ezekiel Elliott is going to talk to the media at uh, 1 uh, Pacific time out here. And Zeke said Dak bought him a diamond bracelet for his birthday. So I want to know what did Zeke buy Dak for his birthday since they're operating on that kind of level like that. Oh, I, I mean, when you, when you got the funds like that, I mean, whew, the sky's the limit. I mean, man, you're getting, you getting diamonds. I know they're real. I know those diamonds was real. So mm, imagine what he's going to get him. Maybe, maybe a Lambo. Maybe a Ferrari. Who, who knows? Who knows, man? That, that's a different ex- type of money right there. What is the most expensive thing you ever bought for a teammate? Oh man, I got I got about a what was it a two hundred and fifty dollar gift card to Best Buy. I mean, I was cheap out here in these streets, man. I wasn't I wasn't doing none of that when we was when I was in the locker room at it. All the offensive linemen giving each other these Louis bags, these Hermes bags, and guys getting leather jackets and all this stuff. If you people hated being picked with me because I was letting them off the rip. No, hey man, you are gonna get this Best Buy card, some type of gift card somewhere, and it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be a lot of money. So hey, if you get if you pick me. Sorry for you. And, and people used to hate it because all the, everybody else was getting all these elaborate gifts. And I, man, I'm too cheap out here. I'm too cheap. I got I to keep all the ducats, Nui. Got to keep them all. Okay, so when you were in Jacksonville, <laughs> how did it go there? Oh, it was the same thing. Cats was getting all types of bags and suits and glasses and diamond this, diamond that, these Rolexes and this. And I got gifted with a few great things, but I'm telling you, you was hitting this good Best Buy car. You might get a, you know, Nordstrom's for 500. Come I give you a little church. Nordstrom's gift. <laughs> Come on, I'm man. sorry. And, it, and it, like you said, it, it was a Jacksonville, and Cats was like, man, you just got paid, and that's this how you gonna do us? I'm like, man, look, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't church, know what to tell you. Church, you know, okay, that's foul. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, church, that's foul, man. You got, you had a bag in Jacksonville, okay? When you with the Cowboys, you're a free agent, cat, but you got the bag in Jacksonville, man. You had to come out here. And, okay, so let me ask this: D- Did you ever do anything for the team? For instance, rented a food truck or something like that for guys at the practice? Did you ever do anything like that? 
Nah, not like that. I mean, the most I did, we, I mean, we took all the, the, the DBs out to dinner a couple of times. I, you know, I'd take the tab. Um, but other than that, man, it was it was nothing, nothing elaborate. But I've been a part of some elaborate, elaborate gifts and, and dinners and the tabs were being in the 30s and 50 thousands. And but for me, nah, I, w- I wasn't doing all that. I, I wasn't doing that, man. I was I was sticking to the basics, the base Best Buy or man. Nordstrom's. I mean, that, that, that was guard. all you was going to get out of church, man. Look at you. Guard, guard that check, man. Guard that check. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, I did ask Dak Prescott yesterday about Simone Biles. And, uh, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest United States gymnast ever deciding to sit out the rest of the Tokyo Games to deal with with mental health. And Dak Prescott has been open about dealing with mental health and what he went through with COVID and what he went through with the suicide of his brother. And he said he supported Simone Biles. He says none of us know what she's going through. And he said he was happy that she decided to take care of herself. So I thought that was pretty, pretty good. I I tweeted it out on uh, uh, on my my Twitter page at Newey Scruggs. It's N E W Y S C R U G G S. It's N E W Y S C R U G G S. As, as Dak Prescott yesterday spoke uh, spoke to her. And by the way, at the Olympics, Sunisha Lee, 18 year old from Minnesota, uh, an American, she won the all around competition. And one of the things I was I was happy to see it. I was happy to see an American capture the fifth straight uh, Olympic all-around gold medal in that competition. But I was just happy, and it just goes to show why you got to keep working, even if somebody's mm-hmm. better in front of you, even if somebody they're, they're more. You just got to keep working because you never know when your opportunity is going to come, and you have to take advantage of your opportunity. And that's what Lee did at 18 years old. She's an Olympic yeah. champion, and hopefully she gets everything that comes along with being the Olympic champion that we saw for Simone Biles and Gabby Douglas and the Nastia Lukin and Carly Patterson. So good, yeah. t- good for Miss Lee. I mean, you're a thousand percent right on that. I mean, talk about, you know, being prepared for when your opportunity arises. I mean, like it, it was thrown. It wasn't like she she knew this was going to happen. It was thrown. And, 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 you know, Simone Biles, she had to walk away from her mental issues, which no one can blame her for that. No one knows the amount of pressure that she had to go under. I mean, maybe only, you know, Michael Phelps or someone like that, who's that celebrated as an Olympic athlete. But. You know, Lee, she, or, or um, yeah, last name was Lee, right? My, my, yes, Lee. Last name? Yes. Lee, yeah. So, you know, that, that thing was thrown upon her, and she was able to step up, you know, prepared, and won the all-around gold. I mean, it was, it's, it's, it was just an immense accomplishment. So proud of her, so proud of the Olympic team. Like you said, that's the fifth straight all-around gold the U.S. has taken home. I mean, that's, that's an incredible accomplishment in its own right. I, I go back to watching Simone Biles and the U.S. national team when they came to Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth for the national championships. And I remember sitting there with my daughters and I said, wow, I feel sorry for these other ladies because they're all, they're all trying to get silver. They're all going for second place because, you know, Simone Biles is going to win. And I think about what I saw and what I thought about. And then here was the opportunity that comes for Sanisha Lee to win the gold medal because she stayed prepared. She stayed ready. And I think that's a great lesson, not just for any athlete, for anyone in life. Just keep preparing. And if there's somebody better than you, fine. Keep competing. Keep doing what you do because you never know when your time is going to come. And I just have so much respect for that. And, Church, I go back to what you talked about when you were a free agent here. All right, you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't stacked in your direction, but you kept competing and you ended up making the football team and you ended up having the career that you wanted. But you had to be prepared and you had to make sure you were handling your business to be ready for that opportunity. Oh, you- you had to because you never know what was going to happen. I mean, we, I was taking third string reps basically all throughout the whole camp, getting third string reps in preseason games. And then uh, Pat Watkins got hurt for a little bit. And he missed one of the games and he missed about three or four practices. And, you know, that was my opportunity to run with the twos. We started playing dimes. So I got a little bit of runs with or runs with the ones as a dime. And you never know when your opportunity arises. You just got to make sure that you're ready for that situation. And just like Lee and, and myself and countless others, when, when your situation arises, you got to be ready for it and she was she was ready for it took advantage of it and same thing goes out to all these young cowboys in there that's going into their first training camp or their second or third if that situation arises where you get an opportunity to run with the ones run with the twos you got to take advantage of it you got to do something each and every day to get the coach's attention whether that be one batted down pass or you made a great communication and put them in the right defense or you just didn't make a mistake all day you got to have one thing in mind that the coaches go back to that film and say oh man he he did pretty good today let's see what he can do further on so if you can do that mentality i mean it'll become easy it'll become easy for you 
piggyback of what you said, 2016, right out here, Oxnard, California. Jamil Showers is splitting reps with Dak Prescott as a third-team quarterback guy. Kellen Moore is the number two quarterback, and Tony Romo is the established starter. And we all know mm -hmm. what happened there. Dak Prescott ends up becoming the number one guy back up to Romo because Kellen Moore ended up getting a, a leg injury, which ended his career. And then we saw Tony in that preseason game against Seattle get hurt, and Dak Prescott starts the season at 8-0, and, you know, the rest, and it becomes rookie of the year. So that goes back to just taking advantage of your opportunity and despite whatever else is happening in front of you or who's better than you, just keep working. So anyway, man, once again, happy for Lee and, and we hope that Simone Biles can find the, the peace she needs mentally to be um, the whole person and the best person for her. Uh, Church, I'm going to get out here. I want to catch some of this practice here. I want to catch out some of these big uglies and what they're going to do. We report back <laughs> next time we got the Players Lounge. And I'm going to be very interested to see how your man Double G, Garrett Gilbert, bounces back today because Dax. He's a gamer. Won't be practicing for the next few days. Does he make the strides he needs to be? And if you're Cooper Rush, do you find a way to go ahead and try and push ahead of Garrett Gilbert? And how much can Ben DiNucci improve? So these quarterbacks have an opportunity to show these coaches what they can do. Or Will McClay's going to be on the phone bringing in somebody. So that, that, that's what's <laughs> going on with that backup quarterback <laughs> position right there, man. Hey, good stuff. Um, appreciate you. Hey, everybody who works behind the scenes here at DallasCowboys.com. Uh, radio, thank you so much. We got Chris, we got Will, a whole host of other people that make this thing work out here in Oxnard, California. This has been the Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Newey Scruggs. Take care. Goodbye. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!